Okay. Um, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, give a presentation uh, regarding uh, both the production techniques of making the iridium ruthenium oxide and talking a bit about why uh, an alloy of iridium ruthenium oxide is very important. And uh, thirdly, some evidence uh, to show that we are truly making uh, an alloy. Um, first of all, a little bit of background regarding uh, Ames Goldsmith Company. Um, we are a 300 uh, employee company uh, across nine sites with eight divisions. And within that, uh, my uh, particular company is KMIG, and we are based in Dundee in Scotland. Uh, Ames Goldsmith is a um, extremely uh, large silver uh, production and handling company. Um, we actually do 25% of the silver uh, worldwide. Um, but KMIG itself is actually more uh, involved with uh, the precious metal um, away from silver, which would include platinum, uh, iridium, ruthenium, etc. So, what are we trying to achieve in this uh, hydrogen economy industry? Um, quite simply, we, as an industry, are looking to manufacture devices that will convert a liquid or gas fuel into electrical energy or vice versa. One such device type is the PEM fuel cell and its near neighbour, the PEM electrolyzer. So, really easy what we're trying to achieve. We'll see. <laughs> what are the challenges for the catalyst? Um, in regards to function as a, a PEM fuel cell or as a PEM electrolyzer, uh, what is the uh, challenges for that as a catalyst material? So obviously high reactivity, chemical stability, crystallinity, miscibility, one or two things here. So as you can see, quite a few things that we have to achieve. So you might simply think, oh, it's just really easy, let's just make some material, throw it down. Uh, not quite that easy. So of course we have many challenges. And if you come here today and you go around, uh, you will see that there are uh, many people offering uh, electrolyzers, uh, electrolyzer companies, as a complete unit, as a turnkey system. Um, so what goes into that complete unit? Well, obviously, uh, you'll see many companies here offering stacks and parts to make stacks, uh, bipolar plates, exa for example. And if you take that back a step, you will find that at the heart of that, there is an MEA, a membr membrane electrode assembly. And on that MEA is a catalyst that's coated on there. So fundamentally, the catalyst is the foundation of the whole complete unit. So the catalyst, obviously, is an increasingly, or is a very important part of the whole system. So KMIG Iridium Ruthenium is recognized as having an answer to the key performance criteria that I showed earlier. Um, but why? Why is our catalyst so good? Well, first of all, if we did some analysis on that and we look at it from the point of view of a powder X-ray diffraction analysis, we can see that our material, um, when we look at the, uh, the scan of this, it's um, crystalline. Also, it has very broad peaks. It's nanoparticulate in size, which is what the broad peaks are, are, are inferring. And also, it's a very complex uh, pattern. So it's actually very difficult to get the baseline and do some analytics on that, like shear equations, uh, for example. So a little bit about the production techniques. So what we do is we actually do batch processing. Um, the reason we do batch processing is because it keeps the, um, the scale uh, within the chemist's hands uh, in other words, we are able to uh, control the variables. 
and also we can scale this up. Now we're not looking at making tons and tons of uh, iridium ruthenium, we're looking at making kilogram scale, so uh, it's still achievable um, to scale up. And the fact that we actually make several batches of this, um, what it tells us is when we do XRD uh, comparisons, we have a very repeatable product, so it's not just uh, a one-off, it is a, a, a repeatable product. When we um, do some further analysis on this, uh, and we look at it from the point of view of uh, trans transmission electron microscopy, uh, we can see that uh, our material is very uh, nanoparticulate. So this backs up what we are actually seeing with the uh, XRD. And we can see that uh, our material is surprisingly rod-like in its structure. Sorry. And oh, one too many. You can see uh, it's very highly crystalline with uh, many lattice planes evidenced here. Um, okay. So this is all good, uh, but actually we need to have this be, uh, reactive as uh, a, an electrochemical material. There's no point in having some uh, material that looks all nice, but actually we have to make sure that it functions as it's supposed to do. Um, so the industry standards are, are the, the first iteration was um, using iridium oxide. Uh, so when we actually compare our iridium ruthenium oxide, uh, it's a good benchmark for us to show that uh, um, it's um, very similar to uh, the performance of the iridium oxide. Also, what is amazing about our material is we have a, a very high surface area. Uh, it's up in the 130, 140 meters square per gram. Um, for a metal, that is amazingly high. Uh, and that's one of the key reasons why we have such a, 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 a great performance uh, electrochemically. Um, the other thing that we are able to do, uh, and it's an ongoing um, uh, um, it's an ongoing uh, thing that we're looking at doing within the, the company is looking at the active surface area. Now the active surface area tells us a lot about the kinetics of our material. Uh, it also tells us the, some performance criteria uh, that we typically wouldn't get. Um, however, to come back to the actual production side of things, um, just to show, as I mentioned earlier, we actually do one, one gram up to one kilogram plus batch sizes. That might not seem like much, but when you're actually talking about iridium uh, or if it was platinum, for example, which we also handle, um, that is quite an impressive uh, amount of uh, material to uh, handle on the lab scale. Um, but we can do that and we can do it effectively and we can do it repeatably and we can do it with a uh, very good um, control in the uh, parameters that uh, I've been talking about. So how do I know that this um, material is an alloy? Well, first of all, uh, we did some uh, further TM analysis and on the basis of that, we can actually look at uh, EDX mapping. So the EDX mapping is a technique which allows us to uh, look at the signature of what uh, elements are composing that uh, particular uh, particle. And as you can see, we have a very homogeneous uh, result for both iridium and ruthenium and the oxygen content. So what that's intimating to us at the level here, which you can see is a, a one micron particle, is uh, we are getting a very um, complete uh, signature. Uh, so it's not discrete. In other words, we're not getting particles of ruthenium. We're not getting particles of iridium. We're actually getting iridium ruthenium. And we looked at the lower half of the same particle just to show it wasn't uh, a one-off. And we did that with several other particles. And we're very um, convinced that we, we have no ruthenium whatsoever as individual particles or iridium. Um, one further slide shows 
when we come down into the uh, very low nanometer range, uh, you can actually see that our iridium ruthenium is still giving a signature, um, which again indicates that this is neither an iridium particle nor a ruthenium particle, but it is in fact an iridium ruthenium particle. Um, to further evidence this, to back this up, um, we did some XRD scans. So if you look at iridium on its own and ruthenium on its own uh, as oxides and then look at an iridium ruthenium physical mix, you will actually see there's very good um, comparison between the, the black scan and the middle scans. However, if you look at the, the lower scan there, the purple one, you will notice that um, there is quite a shift in the um, signature peaks, uh, which really does uh, further evidence uh, that we are making a true alloy of iridium uh, ruthenium oxide. So why, that, why is it important that we have iridium ruthenium as an alloy? Well, for one thing, it gives us a poly poison tolerance. So again, as I said, this is a, a further iteration from just using iridium oxide. However, one of the key problems uh, people have uh, experienced in the industry when they use this as an electrolyzer is that the ruthenium will typically leach out and go into your membrane. So that is a problem for the industry. However, as we are making an alloy, that ruthenium is atomically uh, within the lattice and pretty much doesn't have anywhere to go. So some agglomeration uh, from SEM um, shows that we have um, obviously uh, these crystallites coming together. And when we do our PSD uh, look at this, the particle size, we see that we have a very, very good uh, control on our particle size and it comes in at one micron. Again, why is that important? Um, because if you actually want to go and make a paste or an ink from this, uh, you want control on your particle size. Um, and again, this helps with uh, the miscibility. Um, and why again is that important? Because you want to make that ink and if it separates when you make that ink, then you have a problem when you try and coat your MEA. Um, why is it important for production techniques um, that we have these um, ongoing uh, ventures? Uh, well, because we can offer a complete uh, turnkey system. Uh, so we're looking at the recovery of MEAs and recovery of the metal, and we actually have direct access to those metals in the first place. And not only do we have access to these metals and have them as access from recycling, but we can actually refine them as well. Um, so this obviously is important for the future of the industry. Uh, cost is one of the other problems with the, the catalyst. Uh, a lot of people say, obviously, we're talking with precious metals. Um, but like everybody else, we are looking at strategies uh, to try and minimize uh, iridium use um, or, or platinum use, uh, which is another uh, aspect of our company. Uh, so yeah, we try and uh, look at uh, developing a range of supports for that. So just to summarize, um, the material that we are making, we've shown it to be crystalline, truly intermetallic, truly nanoparticulate in the bulk, not just one or two uh, nice uh, skim off uh, parts of the, the material. Um, and also we have a very good control in our agglomeration. So I'd like to thank uh, both uh, the Hanover Messi for uh, allowing me the chance to present, um, University of St Andrews for uh, some of the analysis work, and uh, our parent company, Ames Goldsmith. And if you'd like to contact us, uh, we are actually exhibiting uh, at the Scotland is now um, within the stands at L66. So thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. John Love. Are there any questions from the audience? Okay, then let me have the first one. Um, so it seems to be very interesting for electrolyzers, as you said, yes. um, also for safety reasons. Where, who are your clients or where do you already, 
who do you work with at the okay. moment? Okay, so typically any, anybody who's building an electrolyzer, um, even fuel cells, we, that, that, that would be some of our clients as well. Um, but yeah, basically anybody who's building electrolyzers, uh, we are making that um, material to go down, first of all, onto the MEA. Um, a, lot, a lot of people think they could just simply make uh, iridium or, or an oxide and just throw it down there, but they would lack all the control that uh, the presentation is showing. And uh, one thing that we really do have, which is unique, is uh, this uh, alloy of the iridium ruthenium. And since you're here with, uh, representing Scotland, can you maybe elaborate a little bit how uh, is the situation about renewable energy in Scotland since we have you here? Yes, yeah. Um, so it's very exciting times. Uh, obviously, a lot of uh, wind farms offshore is coming on board. And there's a, a, an increasing talk uh, about um, putting electrolyzers uh, in a, across the co uh, country for that. Um, a second thing, which is... Um, uh, a major hub uh, within Europe is the uh, hydrogen bus uh, um, venture that's happening. So again, the fueling systems and stations for that uh, requires electrolyzers. Uh, so although that's not directly us, uh, we are part of that whole uh, infrastructure. Thank you very much. If you have further uh, topics to discuss or just want to have a look, please go to their booth. It's in this direction all the way and you can't miss it with their very colorful um, uh, booth they have. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you, Mira.